Hello everyone, Mark with High Tech Legion. In this video we're going to be doing a review of the Lipa LV12 CPU cooler. Uh, we have the black version that I'm going to be giving you guys an overview, going through the features, actually installing it in the PC case, showing you the installation process, and then going over some comparison benchmark numbers as well and giving you our final conclusion. Make sure you stay tuned. And here we can see I have all of our accessories laid out for our Lipa LV12 black CPU cooler. We have of course our included baggies uh, with screws for our mounting hardware. Um, this also has some uh, cut little rubber pieces um, if you wanted to mount a secondary fan to the back of the heatsink uh, and affix some rubber as you can see right in here. There's a little rubber between the fan and the heat sink to uh, prevent from vibration. Take a look here at the heat sink. It's very nice uh, matte black finish. Um, it has a slight gloss to it, but it's not shiny. You can see on the top of the surface here, the Lipa logo there is chrome. Uh, which is very cool. It stands out because of the overall black finish of the rest of the heatsink. And we can see our louvers here in the top, uh, which go down the center fins of the heatsink all the way through to the bottom uh, for some direct cooling. Our fan clips here we can see securely latch to the groove on the side of the heatsink. Not a very large heatsink, very lightweight, even with the fan mounted. You can see the nice glossy black. Lipa branded fan. Of course, as normal with Lipa, they have the cutout in the end of the fan there. And we can see on the bottom of our heat sink, it is a direct heat pipe. So the copper that is exposed is the four heat pipes that run up through the fins and they make direct contact with the top surface of the processor. Um, with this heat sink, you could, I just normally apply my thermal paste the way that I uh, would for any other heat sink but on these you can actually put a thin line on the copper here so that it makes direct contact um, it's really not necessary you can apply your thermal paste normally but as you can see when you apply and remove thermal paste because there's a separation between the copper and the aluminum there it does leave a little residue you could probably use a toothpick or something to get in there a uh, little um, to get that out and remove it, but as long as your main surface here is clean of the thermal interface material, it shouldn't cause any issues. Anyway, Leap also includes two additional fan clips um, for mounting a secondary fan on the heatsink. They include your screws for socket LGA 2011, of course, your back plate, which has a nice texture on the back side so it's not just shiny in the back of your case um, if you were mounting to the AMD motherboards um, on this side for the Intel we can see our three different holes for our three different socket types and we have our Intel and AMD hold downs here you can see they're very nice shiny um, a chrome finish to them very nice and will look very nice inside the case with the mounting and here is the actual bracket that um, holds the CPU heatsink down to the mounting hardware and this is actually very impressive uh, it's solid um, it is aluminum so it's lightweight the holes are drilled on the top here um, probably reinforced with a uh, stronger metal I, could, I can't say exactly what type but the aluminum if you were to tighten too tight it might leave a depression in the top so they've actually drilled that out a little wider and put uh, a stronger shank of metal down in there so that you can't you know depress that metal or start to wear it down if you remove or tighten um, it does have your two notches here that lock into the bottom of the heatsink and when this is secured down this heatsink does not move it's very very sturdy and for being you know just aluminum it is lightweight but at the same time because of the thickness and it being solid it is very uh, solid 
and we have our installation guide of course here which goes through all your different socket installations uh, AMD and Intel very nice design box um, instructions on the back side here in multiple languages um, these are looks like about 11 different languages there you can see on the right side here your package contents it goes through everything that's included inside the box on your left side here it goes through our specifications uh, compatible sockets for Intel is 775 1155 1156 1366 2011 and 1150 AMD is AM2, AM2+, plus, AM3, AM3+, plus, FM1, FM2, and FM2+. Plus. Gives us our, dim our dimensions of the heat sink and the fan and the speeds, which you'll see later in the review. Um, it is a BOL bearing uh, on the fan, and it is a four-pin four PWM fan. And our features here, it talks through uh, the excellent thermal con conductivity exceptional heat transfer efficiency, superior contact, um, compatibility, being that it is a slim heat sink, um, it has compatibility so it won't interfere with your memory slots. Um, it's not a very large heat sink so it will fit in most cases also. Um, the high durability, the patented PWM adjustable peak speed fan control, the barometric oilless bearing, it is available in black or white. Um, it is silenced with high performance, so the fan speed does operate very silently, but still gives the same amount of performance because of the design of the heatsink and the easy installation um, that it's the all-in-one bracket for both Intel and AMD. And you can see here the U-shaped, uh, the louvered fins that are on the top instead of just being straight across, like they're comparing to a standard heatsink here. Uh, your airflow is going through it's actually coming across those fins and pushing down through the airflow also so that it's helping redirect some of that air not just from the front to the back but down through those louvers and then we can see our black and white uh, availability of colors so they really do um, meet demands for a lot of different uh, computer users some have dark cases some have white cases looking for a heat sink that will get the job done. Um, so stay tuned, we're gonna go through the benchmarks and we're also gonna go through installing this heat sink into our Intel uh, Haswell socket motherboard. So you'll be able to see how the installation goes, um, not for all sockets, but just for the Haswell socket, which is pretty standard across the Intel um, and how dirty and stirrable this uh, bracket really makes this heat sink once it's mounted. All right, we're gonna go through the installation of the Lipa LV12 CPU cooler. We have our back plate here, uh, which is dual purpose for Intel socket and AMD socket. So we're gonna go ahead and put the Intel socket side towards our motherboard. Now, because this one has multiple mounting holes for the different sockets, what you wanna do before you start putting your thumb or your little screws here to hold the back plate in place and also your mounting brackets is get all of your holes lined up so that you know that you have the right holes for your CPU socket. So once all four holes are lined up with the back plate, these screws can go in either way. And we'll just go ahead and screw these in here. They one thing that I will say about these is it takes a minute to get it lined up and being that you're in such a tight area here with the CPU socket um, it's kind of a little awkward and don't tighten each one down as you do it because like I said there is a little bit of movement so you want to give yourself that movement um, before you put each one down and make sure that we get our little uh, washer that's included uh, down against the motherboard side and then once you get all four started and you know just hand tight so that we still have a little bit of movement left there so now that they're all started we can let go of our back plate and you can go ahead and just get these secured down we're going to go ahead and put our mounting brackets on to secure our cooler 
Now one thing you want to pay attention to is whether you're going to have the cooler facing the rear of the case with a fan on the rear or whether you're going to have it facing the top of the case which in this case I have uh, the 200 millimeter fan in the top of my case. If you do mount it this way even with I have the G-Skill Sniper series uh, memory you can see now I'm sitting on the processor and it does clear the memory so maybe if you had some taller memory you might not be able to mount it this way um, but even with the G-Skill Sniper series memory it can still be mounted uh, facing the top of the case and not get in the way again the clips here are pretty simple uh, they hold in place fairly well I always take you have to take those off to get the front mounting screw and the mounting plate in and we'll go ahead and get the plates on now these are slotted so what you want to do put them down and because they can move like so you want to just get all again the screws on and snug but don't tighten them up until you have all four in place and as you can see here I have not applied any thermal paste because I always wait to do that till the last minute if you accidentally were to drop a screw or put your finger in it it's a little messy so we just get all of our screws in place See, just like that we get all our screws in place get them snug and then make sure our brackets are lined up and there's an easy way to do this that I've found sometimes with these uh, heat sinks for the voltage regulators or if you have water blocks on your voltage regulators um, it's a little tight when you get into some of those corners um, this is our mounting plate and what I do is to make sure that we're going to mount up get it on make sure our screws are loose make sure our brackets look pretty straight and then give a little bit of pressure that will hold our bracket go ahead and tighten down do the same on the other side make sure our bracket is straight a little pressure go ahead and get our screws tightened down now you're all set now when you put your heat sink on here the nice thing about this too is the bracket locks into two holes on the heat sink so once it locks in it's really firm in place so we can put that down get it over our two mounting holes like so and then we have our two little nuts here that will screw down and hold that tight in place and Lipa has included a little wrench um, you could also use a flat blade or Phillips screwdriver for these but this little wrench that they include fits right over these little nuts to tighten them down actually works pretty well um, even with all the rest of my components in place in the case here I can still go ahead and tighten these down even with my memory over here we can go ahead and get this snugged up not getting in the way of course you always have to usually take your fan off the heat sink um, to get to bolt screws and all you have to do is snug them now once you snug this heat sink it's very sturdy on the processor it doesn't move at all so it's a very stable system um, the fan clips <clears throat> that hold our fan in place again this was actually very easy to just put these right here into the holes and come down like so now Lipa has already placed rubber grommets on the heat sink on this side uh, so we want to make sure that we're sitting on those rubber grommets and the fan clips just with a little force stretch backwards onto the heat sink and lock in place with a little force they lock right in place very easy um, assembly again we have our fan cable here that we would just plug into the PWM 
header on the motherboard, which on my motherboard is right down here um, beneath, so you want to make sure that you plug that in. You fish it underneath with the fan on. There is no interference at all um, with the heat sink mounted in this direction with your memory slots. And you can actually remove the first memory slot here without getting uh, in the way of the fan. If you had the heat sink mounted 90 uh, degrees blowing towards the top of the case, it would restrict you from being able to remove your memory while it was mounted. Um, but in this case, you can get to your memory. So that was the installation process. Thank you for watching our review of the Lipa LV12 CPU cooler. I hope you enjoyed it. For the full review, see the hightechlegion.com website. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to see upcoming video reviews. Don't forget to find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash htlreviews and also follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash hightechlegion. Thank you.